Greetings fellow YouTubers. Over here you see the Arduino Nano V3 version 3 um, wearing a Atmega 328P chip. Um, for me this is one of the, uh, the nicest boards out there um, given that it can provide you of using all the pins if you like um, and well you can tune it and that's kind of what I'd like to show you in this video. Um, I'd like to show you the current that it uses while starting. Uh, so I got my power bank set to 3.3 volts. Current limiter, well, let's put it to 550, more than enough. Um, the digital multimeter is set to um, 20 milliamps. So let's hook it on. Okay, so I, I hooked it on. Um, as you can see, the, the L LED it's blinking. Um, to me, meaning that the, the default blink scheme is loaded in, into this uh, thing. Um, the, it, I call this a virgin uh, Nano V3 board because I didn't do anything with it. Um, the power usage is between 10 and 11 milliamps. Um, well, the trick would be to reduce that significantly. Um, I'll be removing um, the, in, in order to do that, I'll be removing um, the resistor just right in front of the power LED. Um, I'll show you what the difference is after that. Um, after that, I'll be removing um, the AMS, uh, what is it, triple one seven. Uh, 5 volt regulator and after that I'll be trying to remove the, the CH340G the USB um, uh, USB controller um, so let's get started with the first one So we got the resistor removed and with that the power light won't work anymore. Uh, you see the L still blinking. Um, sorry for the noise in the back, that's my heat gun. Looking at the usage, it's more between 8.5 and, and 10 I think now. So that saved us 1, 1.5 one milliamps. Um, let's jump into the voltage regulator, see what we can get from that. So here's the 5 volt voltage regulator, um, which will regulate anything from 12 volt down to 5, back to 5. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, the, you see four pins, the top one and three below. The top one uh, we will connect to the, the middle and the right, um, that's just to immediately pass through the power, so we're no, not doing any regulating anymore. The left one is attached to the ground, we're going to leave that one alone, uh, we won't touch it. Okay, so here's the result of removing the voltage regulator. Um, there it is. AMS1117. I put down a pre tinned piece of wire uh, at the position where it was, uh, connected to the two outer right uh, pins and the top one. So let's see what results we have now. We have between 6.5 and 7.7 .7 milliamps, which is quite okay. Um, Kind of reduces uh, the overall power consumption. Let's see what we got when we remove the USB controller. Um, we'll be removing uh, the resistors below it too. 
Um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, also the, there's this little, little quartz crystal. We'll, we'll remove that one too. Okay, so much for the USB controller. It's gone, as well as some uh, resistors, condenser, uh, capacitor. Um, so we won't be able to use a USB upload from this moment on. Technically, we can remove the, the mini USB connector. I will do so um, normally if I want to have an as flat device as, as possible. Then I also remove the reset button. Um, currently, it's now and then practical to have a, a five volt input anyway, so uh, you can still use that. You might wonder why I've been hooking up this device to the five volt uh, as from the start. Uh, well, that's because the five volt is provided from after the uh, voltage regulator, um, so I would be able to measure at three point three volts all the time. The, the current ROM. In order to start programming this without the USB controller here, um, I will be using a, a separate USB programming or a programmer over here. Um, I'll be using it with a 5 volt. Do not connect the 3.3 and the 5 because you will get serious uh, heat ups on this device. Uh, Okay, so there we have it. The top brown connector there is the plus 5 volts. The black one is the ground. Uh, the yellow greenish one is the reset pin. And the blue line is headed to the uh, Arduino receive and the USB programmer transmit. Uh, and the transmit of, on the Arduino side going towards the programmer's receive. Um, so just for your reference, we'll be putting down a sketch um, that does a blink every 8 seconds uh, and we'll check out what the current draw is uh, once hooked up. Okay, we're connected again, um, it's blinking every what is it? 16 seconds, I think. And every four seconds, it uh, shows a small uh, one millisecond LED blink um, to show that it's counting. Um, let's check out the, the multimeter, what it says. Because it's currently set to 20 milliamps, um, it won't show us well enough when it's, uh, when it's active. Um, I can put it to uh, maximum of 200 microamps but it will uh, reset the uh, once it would go over the 200 microamps uh, the current that the nano needs for a very small period of time would be too much and reset it um, just in order I show you the wires um, they are still wired this way. Um, let's wait for it to show about six milliamps, and then, yeah, I will reduce towards two milliamps. You see the short blink now and then, four point four. You see, this is the, the reset moment for the very brief period. It, it asks just too much. I'll now upload uh, a different sketch that will just do anything on an interrupt so we can have a more stable 
part, the video part of this. Okay, so I now connected the device again. Uh, I can reset it so you see uh, it is running. Oh, I can short it out there. Um, I got the interrupt pin set. Um, as you can see, 20 milliamps, it's not showing anything. When I'm going down to 200 microamps, it shows me 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, that would mean it would take only between 1 and, well, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 microamps, which, which is a pretty deep sleep mode. Obviously, this is not a, a, a device that is exact in registering the amount of milliamps, but well, it's not using a lot at this stage. So let me just put it to 20 milliamps again and hit the, the interrupt. I think it's this one. Yeah. So you see it pop up towards, what was it, 7.5 milliamps? Uh, but in the meantime, it's, it's still well, pulling almost nothing. Um, if I'd have a better device to, to check out what it's actually asking, or pulling up the power now, um, well, I'd get, get a, a more clear idea. Um, but in this case, I think um, this is for my low power projects, a very acceptable amount. Um, so I'll just wake it up using the D2 pin, uh, make sure that there's a timer on there. And, uh, well, happy Arduinoing. I hope you, you learned something from this. Uh, if you have any comments, please post them uh, down below.